Hi, this is Jaya. In this video, we shall see the summary of the telephone conversation by Ol Soyinka. Ol Soyinka is a well-known Nigerian poet, essayist and playwright and received the Nobel Prize for Literature in 1986. And in this poem, Telephone Conversation, he brings to light the impact of racial discrimination in the society. And this is actually a lyric poem written in three verse and it's written the poem in a question answer pattern and moreover he has written the poem in present tense uh, through which he tries to imply that this racial discrimination is there always and will also be there in future. And here we find that an African American is looking out for a rented flat and uh, he has called the person over telephone because he found that the rent was reasonable but the location is indifferent because of the race and the color of the skin of the people and uh, he actually talks to a white landlady uh, and he asks the room to rent but the landlady after knowing that she that he is an african remains silent and this silence of the landlady shows her indifference and reservation towards the blacks First, she tries to confirm that he is a black and then she hangs up the phone. And this poem was written at the moment when the blacks were given equal rights and responsibilities constitutionally and politically, which we famously call as the apartheid. Now, what happens is we will see the poem and we will try to understand. The poem begins like this. The price seemed reasonable. Price here means the rent for the flat seemed reasonable location indifferent but he says that the place where it is situated is in the white colony the landlady swore she lived off premises and actually in the advertisement the landlady said that she is not living in the same premises nothing remained but self-confession so here the person who is calling had to confess because he did not want to hide anything if he wanted he could have hid but here he knew it is not correct to hide that he is black. He says, Madam, I warned. I hate a wasted journey. I am an African. So even before things get confirmed, he says, I don't want to come so far to look at the flat and later on get rejected because I am a black. So it's better you know that I am an African. Now these lines bring the issue of race up. And here we find a black man is looking for a room and he has called because he has found that the rent is reasonable in the advertisement and he makes a phone call to the landlady of the property and before he could confirm other things he confesses that he is a black man. And here the black man knows very well that the people have double standards that is why he confirms before calling whether the room is available for the black man. Because in the advertisement, it has said that anyone can apply. But he has already had bitter experiences in the past. And he knows that even though people said that the blacks are equal, there is no difference after that. And in spite of the advertisement saying no difference, he wants to know whether the landlord is actually willing to accept a black as a tenant. Because... He has gone many times to many places and he has been refused because he was black. The poem continues saying silence. Silenced termination of pressurized good breeding. So he says the lady must be of a good upbringing because she did not hurt him with words. But her silence told what was in her mind. Voice when it came, lipstick coated, long gold rolled cigarette holder piped caught I was foully. Now he, this man also imagines how she will be because he has got an image about the white ladies. So though he has not seen the landlady in person, he imagines a white lady with a lipstick coated uh, lips and a long gold road cigarette holder pipe and it seems as though after he has said that he is an African, he was caught foully and she asks her, how dark? I had not misheard. Are you light or very dark? Button B, button A stench. So now the lady after a long silence, she asks, how dark are you? Are you very dark or are you light? These lines describes the reaction of the landlady when she hears that this man is an African and she wants to know 
that the speaker is black and then she goes into actual silence and her silence tells that she disapproves black people and this landlady must belong to the so called white people who come from good upbringing and they call themselves educated therefore they are very decent so they will not speak against the black people but inside in their mind they have this racial prejudice towards the black people and the black man is also stereotyped because he also imagines a white lady who is talking to him over the telephone he imagines her lips must be painted red with lipstick and she must be smoking and using a gold tinted cigarette lighter and the poet here reveals that both the white and the black people show prejudice towards one another and they imagine the other person as the stereotyped black person or the white person the poem continues up saying that the landlady is careful in not using the word black instead she asks how dark he is whether he is light dark or dark dark and the black man here he thinks whether he has to have a choice like how whether he should press button a or button b in a telephone dial pad because generally when you make an automated call these gives you the choices and this line exposes the hypocritical nature of the white individuals in society now he says of rancid breath of public hide and speak red booth red pillar red pillar box red double tired omnibus squelching tar now here we find that uh, this reaction describes the man uh, when he hears the lady's questions uh, white people actually they hide their racial discrimination in public but in their mind they have that uh, race uh, discrimination in their mind and uh, the double standard of these people angers the black man and his eyes turns red so whatever he looks whether it's a telephone booth or the pillars or a bus passing by all appear red to him but the black man also agrees that the lady must be considered polite because she has put her question very gently and uh, the black man looks at the racial discrimination uh, as oppressing him uh, and he compares it with a double decker omnibus which travels on a black tar on the road he says it was real shamed by ill mannered silence surrender pushed dumbfounded to beg simplification consider she was wearing the emphasizes are you dark or very light revelation came you mean like plain or milk chocolate her accent was clinical crushing in its light impersonality rapidly wavelength adjusted i chose west african sepia and as after thought down in my passport now these line tells how the black man describes himself he tells that he is a west african in a way is also not ready to use the word black so he tells that he is black indirectly and uh, he also reveals uh, uh, his uh, himself black though he is happily saying he is an african he does not want to use the word black to describe himself and therefore he uses the terminology which is used in his passport as evidence and support this shows that he is also not ready to accept that he is black numerous bitter experiences of this racial discrimination must have ma- made this uh, black man uh, behave like this uh, now the poem continues saying silence for spectroscopic uh, flight of fancy till truthfulness changed her accent uh, hard on the mouthpiece what's that conceding don't know what that is like brunette that's dark isn't it not altogether facially i am brunette but madam you should see the rest of me palm of my hand soles of my feet are a peroxide blond friction caused foolishly madam by sitting down has turned my bottom raven black and uh, these line shows how the different shades of a black man's color are being discussed while the black man says that he is not completely black the lady willingly calls brunette as dark and the black man tries to say that his palms and his soles are not black but the landlady is not ready to listen to him and then the black man comes up with a poor excuse saying that he is black because he is exposed himself to sun for a long time and uh, he also shows that uh, he is desperate to get a room for rent so he apologizes for being black and he is forced to endure the shame of his color 
One moment, madam. Sensing a receiver rearing on the thunder clap about my ears, madam, I pleaded, would you ra? Wouldn't you rather see for yourself? Now this man goes to the extent of begging to her to see him at least once to consider how black he is, and then give him the room, ma'am. And these concluding lines describes the landlady's action and the man's position. On hearing that the man is black, the lady wants to confirm it. And after confirming his blackness, she hangs the telephone, indicating that she is not ready to lend her room for a black person. And the poem comes to an end, and the black man appears to plead for a chance. He asks the landlady to meet him in person before coming to a decision, but the landlady refuses any further dealings with the man once she confirms he was black. And here the poem ends. And uh, through this poem. Uh, Volsoenka clearly brings out the real situation of the black people, though they are said politically they are considered equal. If you have anything more to add on to what I have said, please add it in the comment box. Like the video, share it with your friends, and if you have not subscribed my channel, please subscribe. Thank you.